All right, and we're live. 33rd installment of the Unplugged Alpha. What is up? What's up, my brothers? Why female-led relationships fail. All right, this will be a fun one. <laughs> so I came across this concept recently. I think it was on the gram on a recommended page, and I followed a page that was titled female-led relationships. I was like, okay, let's see what this is going to be all about. Because here's what we know, right? <clears throat> we know that women hate leading in a relationship. They say they want to, but they don't like it. I'm going to explain why in this episode and get into some evidence around the subject. All right, so before we get started, um, let me just do a little housekeeping. Do me a solid, and if you're watching this live right now on the Facebooks, the Twitches, the Twatters, uh, just click that link I just dropped, head on over to YouTube, and for the sake of the algorithms, give the video a big fat thumbs up. Just helps me out and gets it out to people that need to see this. So <clears throat> I think I asked it earlier this week, a few days ago, on my community tab, and uh, there's quite a few interesting comments there from people on the subject of female-led relationships. So let me just read a few of these for you right now. How's my audio, by the way? I, I had somebody email me the other week and said my audio level is generally too low, especially when I have guests on. It looks like I'm at the right spot. If it's too low, let me know in the live chat. So here's some comments. Uh, GP says, fell for it. I was a plow horse. Her decisions were our decisions. My money is ours and hers was hers. Nothing was ever enough, never again. So, <clears throat> you know, as a guy, you kind of expect, audio is a tad low. Let's try to fix that. I think as a guy, generally speaking, you tend to have the expectation that you're going to be a guy. You're going to be masculine. You're going to lead. Head of the household, all that good stuff, you know, that used to work back in the day. But quite often, we fall for this, like, notion that men or women are the same now, right? We can all do the same thing. We're all exactly the same. But when you put men and women up <laughs> in competitions, like in sport, the men always dominate. And women are better at other things that men suck at, too, right? That's just the way things are. You know, we're supposed to be a compliment to one another, not, <laughs> not railroad the other one, which is what this female-led relationship situation seems to look like, right? Oh, man. Here's a few more. I fell for it as a standard American blue pill male. This is from Ian. About 10 years ago in my early 20s, it completely destroyed my life at the time. There were so many lies told to young men and young women. So let's go through a few more of these uh, points that men are making. And then I'll go to the material on screen, which here I can actually put these up too, um, on screen that uh, educates women on how to be in a female-led relationship. And it is absurd. And then we will switch to take some call-ins tonight, of course, like I always do. Uh, who's this guy? One Revan. When I was younger, I fell for this lie too. I was very into progressive ideas. Today we call them woke ideas. I was eager to show people that as a modern man, I could handle strong women leading the relationship without feeling insecure about it. I wanted people to see I wasn't like the rest of men. And I was a real man because I feel, sorry, because I didn't feel the need to comply with patriarchal standards. I love that word, patriarchal. Yeah, I was clueless about human nature and I sure did pay the price for that ignorance. Okay. Now, I wonder if there's anybody that chimes in you know, to this to this community post that says, oh, it was the best thing I ever did. I haven't seen that yet. So let's let's keep going. Uh, every woman I've dated claimed that men and women were equal. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Next time a, a chick says to you, hey, men and women are equal, stand beside them naked in front of a mirror and just and just point to the obvious differences, you know, and then and then ask her if she thinks men and women are equal and the same and all that stuff. So I asked them to register for the draft like all men do at 18. Suddenly, the excuses came out. That's another great point. Well said, Farmer Nate. Well said. 
I have not fallen to the lie. I think you can say I was one of the last boys who resented their dad because mom told us he was not a real man and not to be like him. My dad got full custody of us. He literally is a Spartan dad. And all we do is not good enough for him. Oh, okay. This is a very thankful for my dad post. Oh, here's one about an ex from Sav Savagust. I always love reading these names on the avatars. Savagust. My ex used to put that crap up about it relationship being democracy of eagles. What the hell does that mean? A democracy of eagles. Until she wanted something, and then she would just unilaterally demand it. When I pointed out the hypo sorry, when I pointed out the hypocrisy that she would throw a temper tantrum. Hmm. Temper tantrum. Where's that on my list of uh, red flags? Let me think. Number 17, that's hissy fits. By the way, if you haven't read the book, where is the damn book? Did I give it away already? No, it's around somewhere. <laughs> it's over my shoulder over here anyway. Get the Unplugged Alpha on Amazon. But that's when she's an ex. Guilty every time I've equaled or been led. So this is trying to be in an equal relationship or being in a led relationship. It's always been a roller coaster based on the emotions of a whammon, and there's no peace either in the relationship or within myself. When I lead, it's a steady, peaceful train of fun town. Learning opportunities in the first group of relationships have helped shape the man I am today. I read the book, The Unplugged Alpha. Thank you, sir. And it further opened my eyes to the BS, build excellence. He's not lying. I realized the hard way that including her in every decision was actually giving her full veto rights. Yeah. You know, again, women have have been told that they're supposed to want to be like man. You know, go get the degree, climb the corporate ladder, smash through the glass ceiling, get a piece of paper for a mahogany with little letters after your name saying that you're important. One of the funny things that I find happens a lot is a lot of these women now believe that men are attracted to their degrees and their careers and their jobs. And it's so not true. The guys that they're attracted to, the high value guys, okay, maybe dorks are attracted to that. I don't know. But the high value guys, the guys making bank, putting a dent in the universe, they're captivating, they're interesting, they have a fantastic life, they got a great network of friends, you know, da 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 da. Those guys want nothing to do with a disagreeable woman, right? They don't want to be led by a woman. They don't want to come home and be told what to do. With some exceptions, however, I have it on good authority that there's at least two Silicon Valley CEOs that have dominatrix that like to have their bottoms beat with sticks while they run around the room like a dog and they want to be told that their ideas are shit. So there are guys that have that fetish. Now, that's a fetish, okay? Now, you have to distinguish the difference between a fetish and a relationship, i.e., you're in an LTR, you're, you've got kids together, you're married, whatever the hell it happens to be that you choose to do. I'm telling you guys, lies. They want you plugged into comforting lies. That's why I wrote the Unplugged Alpha, to unplug you guys, wake you up. There's a reason why our ancestors held to certain roles for centuries. I'll throw this back up. Because it's how we are. A man leading the relationship does not mean the woman is a doormat. It just means the man is taking responsibility. I would add taking authority, as in being a leader, like the head of the household. I think that's important too. But yes. It means the man is taking responsibility. A leader needs people to follow him after all. You cannot, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to run a business with a partner and, uh, you know, it's like you're two chiefs in a tribe. Tribes only have one chief for a reason. There's only one president or a prime minister to a country. There's not a co-president. There's not a co-prime minister. None of this partner shit. That's another terrible word that gets used far too much these days. Um, yeah, you know, that whole partner, like my partner. <laughs> if a woman ever refers, gentlemen, if a woman ever refers to you as your partner, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. That's disgusting. I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> Here's a guy that got betatized, C26CA. He says over here, I had the lead till after marriage and the wife was pregnant with her first child. 
Uh, she started with the threats of leaving, then aborting the baby, which shocked me as a husband and soon to be father. Dude, could you imagine? I mean, like <laughs> you sign up for a marriage, you know, to have kids and, sh and she threatens to abort your child. What a royal bee. After the birth, things appeared to settle down, less fighting, and a year later had a second child. Then her controlling ramped up with increased fighting, a roller coaster indeed. She demanded my obedience. Oh my, my obedience. Now, this dude over here said that he led until after the marriage, and then the wife was pregnant. And then by the time she's got the second kid, she demands his obedience, my time, who I associate with, and freedom where under her control. Yes, I stayed for the children to ensure I was there for them to be part of their lives. 18 years later, the children and I left the wife in the matrimonial home and a divorce is in action. You can't change or control a woman. It's only how much crazy you're willing to put up with. I will be starting a new company this year after the divorce is over and take care of myself and the children. The ex will be left to kick rocks. Alberta, Canada, where family law is just as difficult to men as everywhere else. Family law is the same across Canada, pretty much. It doesn't change that much. It's, it's, it's nearly identical. So you get F, whether you live in Alberta or Ontario or PEI. It's the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, hit the thumbs up like it hurt you. Thanks, Rusty. Appreciate that. Yeah, do not get involved with a woman that calls you her partner. You need to quash that shit immediately. Let me tell you a story. Uh, so the, the, the single mommy that I dated after I got divorced needed to go looking for a car, okay? And this is the first time I heard it, and I quashed that shit immediately. So at the dealership, talking to the um, sales rep, salesman, whatever the hell you want to call him, blah, 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 my partner and I. And I was just like, I was just like, excuse me? You know, like that. And, and you know, I had, a, I had a serious conversation about that shit afterwards. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't deal with it in front of the dude. But yeah, like you have to quash that shit immediately. It's not equals. It's not partner. And you shouldn't have to state, look, you know, not like in this post over here from this guy C where she demanded my obedience. You don't need to demand her obedience. It's either, you know, do it or get lost, you know. I demand your obedience. I demand it. I command upon you to obey. And it's, it's funny because in most marriage vows, they still say to love and to obey. Okay. They don't say to be subservient, to bend the knee, you know, to be obedient, <laughs> to be threatened with having your child aborted. None of that stuff. Give me a break. All right. Let's take a look at some of these female led relationship posts and uh ideas that they want you to consume i got a few things up over here let's pull them up so here's now <clears throat> this is this is how they sell it to women okay i'm assuming there's probably some nerds that um simp for this sort of material as well because the thing about simping is there's a lot of guys that still do it it's a lot easier to simp than to go to the gym, lose weight, make more money, be captivating, have interesting hobbies, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like the standard, like learn game, you know, the standard stuff that attracts women. It's a lot easier to simp than to do work to level up, right? Okay, let's start throwing some of these things up here. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can zoom in so you guys can get the picture. Boom. No, it doesn't make it any bigger, does it? That's the best way we're going to get it. Anyway, so this is on the hashtag female-led relationship. You can find these on Instagram. Uh, what do we have offered to us here? So women on the left, these nerds on the right, uh, begging like dogs in this image. Let's hope that you, here, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller because I don't want YouTube to give me crap for this shit. In fact, I should probably take it down because... <laughs> YouTube is a real pain in the ass with images. I'll just read it. So on the left-hand side, it says, have brains, brains that develop faster, purportedly, you know, for women, higher IQs, earn better grades, are better leaders, better thinkers, better prop, better. I'm just trying to think throughout history. How many, how many world, how many leaders were men and how many leaders were female? We got Alexander the Great, we got Napoleon. Yeah, he was a male. 
uh, military leaders. Schwarzkopf, yeah, he was a male. Patton, he was a male. Um, who discovered uh, North America, the Vikings, you know, at first. And then we had Christopher Columbus, also a male. Um, let me just keep going here. I mean, I mean, I could, I could literally go through every important name throughout history. Genghis Khan, you know, you go way back. I don't, I don't recall. Aside from Cleopatra, is the only name that comes up. The only throughout history. So maybe there was a momentary lapse of reason where she convinced a bunch of nerds to build some pyramids for, her, put some stones together, and uh, maybe she was the female-led, you know, relationship at the time. But throughout history, can, like, can you name one? Like in the comments, we got Caesar. Yeah, Julius Caesar. What other names we got? Just just drop the names in the comments. I mean, is, is there a female leader that we've known in history? Uh, Margaret Thatcher, maybe, you know, perhaps. Some would argue, you know, a great conservative leader of her time. Um, Undisputed, I think, in fact. So maybe there's Cleopatra, which I didn't know too much about, obviously, but we've got Margaret Thatcher. Anybody? Oh, yeah, we've got Justin Trudeau, who's pretty close to identifying it as female, also true. Joan of Arc. Okay. All right, so there's a handful. So they say better thinkers, better leaders, better problem solvers, better, 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 right? You know, we've often said that uh, this toxic version of feminism is a supremacy movement, haven't we? Over 70% are valid, valid, valid dictorians. I got to pronounce that right. Clearly, I didn't make that because I didn't have great grades in school, so they wouldn't put me in that position. But yeah, they're right. I think all women in my high school, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, 65% are co college graduates. That's because, <laughs> that's because guys don't want to go to colleges and university anymore because they're so hostile towards men. Hold the majority of PhDs. I'm a PhD. Where's that from? Uh, earn the majority of master's degrees. Well, good for you. And then it says on the right-hand side here, are for men, this is like, you know, the difference between men and women is what this female-led relationship post says with these, with these dudes sitting there like dogs. Uh, are less flexible and organized, less competent at teamwork and collaboration. Give me a break. Less competent at teamwork. And a... Who do you think took down the woolly mammoths, ladies? Do you think it was one woman that did it by herself? It was a team of men with spears and swords and sharp pointy things and stones. <laughs> Less likely to understand professional tasks. Oh, because we're just dumb guys. Is that, is that what we're saying here? Have a greater predilection for giving up control and surrendering the will of others. Find the prospect of submitting sexually more appealing and are more likely to entertain such fan. When do proper men want to submit sexually? I, I've i never done, like guys in the comments, anyone? Bueller? <laughs> anyway, so that's one. So I'll get rid of that one because I can't really show much from this page apparently because of the imagery. Just trying to find something here if there's any, no. No, you can't put any of this stuff up. That's that's literally how disgusting it is. All right, so let's add to stream. Uh, modern matriarchs. So let's open this up. This is a female-led relationship has become more common than ever, ever as women are increasingly viewed as equal, powerful, and able to take on a formerly masculine. What does that mean, a formerly masculine role? Are they, are they purporting that men are like trying to abandon masculinity or is it because you're trying to squeeze it out of us? by constantly calling us toxically masculine and all that nonsense. Anyway, let's see what this article says here. This is from Couples Candy, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Female-Led Relationships by author Megan Harrison. This is a January, this is a very recent article. So here's Megan. Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to Couples Candy. Here you'll find lots of practical information dedicated to enhancing your relationship and boosting your well-being. As a marriage and family therapist, I love helping people reconnect with their partners in order to experience greater satisfaction from their relationships. All right, let's see what Megan Harrison has to uh, tell us about female-led relationships. So identifying importance of boundaries, the perks, the drop. All right, let's go to uh, the different types. Identifying importance of boundaries, female. Let's see what their boundaries are. Communicate openly, find a comfortable balance, discuss your expectations. Ah, that's standard mumbo jumbo, new wave stuff. Discuss your expectations. Okay, types of female. Level one. Oh, they have levels, fellas. <laughs> 
They have left here. You know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show off my brand new desk. Check this out. Hey, clickety click barba trick. Look at that. Stand up and do this do this show. Why not? Oh, there we go. Let's give this a go. Stand up desks are fun. Level one, lower female control. This FLR level involves at least power differential. Both parties make nearly all decisions together. That sounds like an equal partnership. With the female taking control only in specific previously agreed on situations. So equal with her having slightly more control. In some cases, couples decide to initiate a female-led relationship, but transitioning to a power role is difficult for the women. Asserting dominance may feel foreign or uncomfortable. That's because it is. That's because it always has been, for the most part, throughout history. But just ignore history. Who cares? We'll just, you know, let's just throw it all on a women's show. They don't want to leave, guys. They hate it. They want you to, they want to look up to a giant. They want to be with a guy that's competent and knows what he's doing. Anyway, it may take some time and encouragement for a woman to move from passive to a dominant role. It's not uncommon for couples to shift to a higher level of female dominance once the woman's comfort level increases. All right, level two, moderate. Let's see what moderate looks like. When the woman takes on a more moderate level of control in the relationship, she's typically more comfortable in her dominant role. She is generally the primary decision maker. <laughs> that would suck. Men in this, that's, that basically sounds like most men's marriages today though, right? Doesn't it? She ends up being the primary decision maker. Men in this dynamic tend to enjoy taking on a more passive persona and prefer to be subservient in areas of the relationship. Although many couples are content to stay in a moderately female controlled relationship, men who love to be dominated and women who love to dominate often up the ante by transitioning to a more formal level. While sexual kinks are commonly explored at this level, okay, so basically he's a bitch. The female isn't necessarily in charge of the couple's sex life, though her desires may be prioritized. Okay, let's skip. Some, uh, there's, oh, there's level three now, defined control. You know what? Let's just go right to level four, extreme female control immersion, because I think this is what, probably what most guys experience today in their marriages once they go through the betatization process. Betatization by a thousand concessions. Good for you, good for me. Okay, level four. Couples who enter in an extreme FLR are immersed in female domination and male submissiveness. The female takes complete control on the relationship, deciding how her partner spends his time and how finances are handled. Gee, that sounds familiar. Where did we hear that before? That was right here. Then her controlling ramped up with increased fighting, roller coaster indeed, and she demanded my obedience, my time, who I associated with, and freedom were under her control. Right? Sounds familiar. Okay, where were we at? Male, act as servant, submit to her partner. At this level, nearly if not every aspect of the male's actions are dictated by the female. He'll likely dress to please a woman and submit to her every desire, both inside and outside the house. These women would never, never get away with this shit with me. This, like, any guy that submits to this nonsense, you're basically a beta bitch. Like, you're a plugged-in beta for sure. You are, you are not living your best life. You're not mental point of origin. And at the end of the day, on a balance of probabilities, I would say she's probably got something set up like they're in a polyamorous relationship where she can go pork wherever she wants. So she's ended up, she ends up with like the subservient beta, the plugged in beta that she controls his every aspect of his life while she goes out on the weekend to pork Chad and Tyrone. He'll likely dress to please. Sexually, every kink explored is based on the woman's wants, needs, and desires. Probably dude sits in the corner while she gets, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the couple may delve into hardcore BDSM. At the other extreme, the woman may require complete chastity from her partner. The man has little to no say in the relationship or the bedroom. <laughs> so again, you're basically a little bitch. Previously agreed on punishments can be a turn on for both partners. 
as long as the dynamic is consensual, this extreme level of female dominance in a relationship can be successful. All right, let's see what else our friend, what was her name again? Megan? Hi, I'm Megan. That's it. All right, what else do they have here for us? That does not sound like fun. A few notes regard like even like even guys when they lead relationships, they don't do any of this nonsense. Rarely. I mean, if they do, they're a little messed up in the head. You know, kind of kind of flipping the script, if you know what I'm saying. Like, where was that guy's comment? So let's just flip the words around. Then him controlling ramped up with increased fighting. A roller coaster indeed. And he demanded my obedience, my time, who I associate with, and freedom or under his control. Now, some might argue, but Rich, you've said you've got to make sure that she doesn't go off to Vegas with her girlfriends for a weekend. Correct. If she wants to go, let her go, right? It's just when she comes back, make sure her bags are packed on the front porch and the lock has changed. It's as simple as that. You're not demanding she do something. It's, hey, I don't date women like that. I don't live with women like that. I'm not going to be in a relationship with a woman that behaves like that. Girlfriends with boyfriends don't go to Vegas, you know, to hang out with their girlfriends for a bachelorette party. Doesn't go down. A few notes regarding at the different levels. She says, my number one piece of advice to couples entering a female-led relationship or progressing to more extreme levels is to communicate about any modifications you wish to... Yeah, communicate, communicate, commu negotiate, communicate. That's usually the standard talking points from the plugged-in narrative, right? You just have to negotiate. Nope, don't negotiate. That's, that's, by the way, one of the flaws that I find with Jordan Peterson's conversations is whenever he's talking about relationships, I've heard him often make reference to, well, then you negotiate, you know, something in the relationship. And you don't, you can have conversations about stuff, but you're not negotiating like, well, I'll, I'll do this and then you do that. I mean, anytime you try to negotiate anything in a relationship, it often leads to resentment long term. Um, you just don't respect the other person. While they can certainly uh, natural progress in open communication, blah, 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 negotiate. Uh, you and your partner will listen to you decide which level of dominance. So talk about what level you want to be. Do you want to be level four? Extreme? Extreme dominance? Or do you want to go level one? Lower female control. Megan's got all the notes here for you. Okay, why women love female-led relationships. Okay, this will be good. I discussed, sorry, I discussed FLR with many happily partnered women while pre partnered. <laughs> not married, not in a relationship, partnered. There's that word again, right? The progressive word, partnered. I discussed female-led relationship with many happily partnered women while preparing to write this guide. When asked why these ladies enjoy this type of relationship, they offer the following answers. I like being in control. I like knowing who handles the finances and who is in charge of meals and how. <laughs> so, sorry, let me just reread that. I like knowing who handles the finances and she has me in bracket and who is in charge of meals and housework, him in brackets. My professional life is chaotic, stressful and unpredictable. So I like having full control at home. Vicky, let's see what Paige has to say. I felt, com I guarantee Vicky is probably one of these chicks with a piece of paper framed in mahogany with little letters after her name, working at an accounting firm, law firm, uh, a medical clinic, something, right? And then she comes home and browbeats the shit out of her husband. Get the meals and housework ready, Bill. I felt comfortable, so who's next? Paige. I felt comfortable asking my husband if we could try a female-led relationship because he liked to be dominated in bed. A great sex life. He had zero motivation in everyday life, but he had zero motivation in everyday life. Well, that turns off women, doesn't it? No wonder she's taking a lead. And I was beyond bored with our marriage. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Our new dominant submissive roles have spiced up our entire relationship. He is completely submissive to me now, and we both love it. There's no going back. <laughs> The clock is ticking down to all of these relationships, all of these stories. What do we got here in the super chats? So what she's saying is she wants a loser to all the things that she wants. Pretty much. Uh, F psycho, F and psychos, yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, Nav Navia, what is that name? Navia, I don't know, Nev. 
I've always found my boyfriend attractive, but he lacked a lot of the qualities I was looking for a partner. By taking charge of our relationship, I've helped him become the best version of himself. He holds a powerful role at work, but has become subservient at home. He enjoys the contrast, and I find him sexier than ever. I wonder what these people look like. I just, you know, I picture, I picture the fat acceptance crowd covered in tattoos with pronouns, like the alphabet soup pronouns going on. I, I don't know, man. What do these people look like? I, I, I got to ask the question. I got to ask the question, you know. Our relationship is a peaceful one. This is Amy. We have clear roles and rules. We have no trouble sticking to them. We've been, sorry, we've both been much more content since transitioning. Yeah, I wonder who transitioned. Did somebody transition? <laughs> I love being cherished. My boyfriend and I have been in the FLR for six years now. He has made me feel loved and appreciated every day. I'm very much the dominant and he's passive. Aside from showing his adoration for me, this lifestyle just works for us. We both feel more valued than we did in our previous relationships. You know what? I bet there's a way here. Let's do this. I'm going to minimize this. And so modern matriarchs. Let's see. Because let's get an idea of... Because I said, you know, what do these people look like? So who's following this page here? And we have dominatrix, mistresses. Oh, here, I can put this up on the screen. I mean, this is public. We're probably not going to run into too much trouble with the YouTubes. Oh, look, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet are given their marriage another chance. Probably another female-led relationship. She's like, what, 55 and he's 40 or something? Anyway, uh, dominatrix, Lady Becky Rose, more dominatrix female-led university, dominatrix, dominatrix, women, women. Okay, so there's no dudes that I'm seeing yet. It's mostly dominatrixes, I think. Mark Hamill follows this page. Isn't that fucking Luke Skywalker? What a nerd. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, it looks like Tate was right about Star Wars, wasn't he? Uh, we got Alice, the flirty girl, Jessica, Queen Beast, um, Cardi B, Cardi B, is it like the Cardi B, Diamond Poche, yeah, Cardi B follows this shit too. Are you surprised? Like, isn't she the one that like drugged a bunch of guys and stole their shit or is that somebody else? I, I lose track. You guys let me know in the comments, right? Yeah. I think it was my love for Star Wars. <laughs> Mark Hamill. A uh, bunch of women. Well, we got Mark Hamill, Dr. Daniel Grossman. Okay, another academic dork that's trying to convince people. Well, it's a lot of like hot women and dominatrix typing look, type of looking women, right? And a couple of celebrities here and there. I'm not seeing any real men in here. Like, I'm, okay, when I say real men, I'm talking about like conventionally masculine. Oh, hang on a second. Here's a dorky couple here with the co-creator of Male Chastity Day. There you go. There's your standard. There's your female-led relationship couple right there. Keyhold, it's called. Aphrodite, sweet mamisa. Yeah, I think a lot of these women that... I, I mean, I can't tell hashtag BLM pronouns in the bios. I can't tell uh, between the dominatrixes and like the regular women, but um, the regular women should probably get used to like liking cats and uh, box wine subscriptions because that's pretty much what you end up with in an unhappy LTR dealing with that because conventionally the vast majority of men um, are definitely preferring more feminine women. I'm talking like conventionally masculine, like unplugged alpha males. Prefer feminine women that are just attractive beauties, right? Um, and those women like to be in the frame of strong masculine men that know how to protect them. Can preside, can protect, has the ability to make bank, lives an interesting life, all that good stuff. Oh, here's some comments from men. Oh, geez. Let's, let's deal with why the men, let's see what Megan has to say here. And there's drawbacks after this. Oh, I can't wait to get to that. Um, okay. So Timothy. Timothy. Timmy. 
Let's get on with Timmy. I have a tendency to mess up anything good in my life, so I prefer that my wife take charge. Oh, start from the get-go with disparaging yourself. I'm a nerd and I can't do anything right, so I want to let my wife take charge. I don't have to concern myself with decisions that could negatively affect our relationship because you'll never make any decisions, dude. In all honesty, I just don't like making important decisions. She does a much better job. All right, Timmy. There's no power struggle, says Gavin. Gavin, isn't, isn't there a... There's a governor in the States, Gavin... It's in California, Neustrom. Everybody hates him, don't they? From what I understand, my buddy uh, Aubrey Huff lives out there. Power struggle. Okay, Gavin. Um, since we've defined our expectations and discussed our roles at home, discussed, probably there was some negotiating in there too. As an added bonus, it has made parenting 100% easier. It's probably because you're doing all the parenting, you nerd. <laughs> Poor Gavin. All right, let's see what Dominic's got for us. My passivity has always been views, viewed as a weakness. My female-led relationship has turned what was perceived as a flaw into a strength. I'm grateful my better half proposed this arrangement. I no longer wonder if there's something innately wrong with you. Yeah, there is something innately wrong with you, dude. She's probably pegging you, man. Nor Norman. We got one in from Norm. Norm! I don't view this lifestyle as a preference. I see it as a necessity. I, <laughs> I work long hours and have to travel a lot for business. My home, home is my escape. By being in charge of virtually every decision, my wife makes my life much happier and easier. Let's go back to this dude over here. Did he seem like he was happy? Then her controlling ramped up with an increased biting, a roller coaster indeed, and she demanded my obedience, my time, who I associated with, and freedom were under her control. Dude was not happy. He was pissed. All right, let's see what Megan's got for us on the drawbacks. I'm a longtime fan of female relationships for a variety of reasons, but admittedly, they aren't for everyone. To thrive, each couple must find the relationship style that works best for them. It's important to note that no relationship is perfect, and even good, solid relationships are rocky at time, whether to be traditional, blah, blah, blah. That being said, I'd like to share some insight. Okay, these are from the interviewees. <clears throat> best response when asked about the difficulty. Okay. Him and his wife, Maddie. So Mark and Maddie are the two of them in this one. Absolutely not, Mark said. We're determined to make this work. My wife's dominance made me insecure after losing my job. So we revalue the power dynamic and establish new boundaries. We're better than ever. So dude loses his job and is unemployed. And his wife's dominance kicks in. Actually, it sounds like it kicks into overdrive. Steven says, I felt like I was living a lie because I couldn't open up to my friends or family members about being a submissive at home. The stigma is ridiculous. Dude, it's... <laughs> Stigmas. I gotta, you know, I gotta laugh at this, like, progressive New World Order of, like, the stigmas, you know? Who says that fat isn't sexy? It's, well, it's unhealthy. And most men are not attracted to it. So, want to call it a stigma, too? And I wish it didn't affect me or my relationship, but it did. So dude is, dude's basically getting called out by his family for being a little bitch. Dung is fun. The best thing about being a younger guy in shape is you can have older women and younger women. All the old guys will spend money to get them, and I did not have to spend anything to get them. Yeah, so you're basically the alpha seed at that point. Women do that. These these cougars go for the younger dudes, man, just to just to get their uh, itches scratched. Sometimes, I resented my girlfriend for making decisions without me and filling in after making cancel plans. She always repeated my concerns. Emilio, what's this one over here? Shayna, told pretty much everything. So here's what women had to say. It got exhausting. I'd work all day and come home to round two, home life. I was in control of pretty much everything. So I asked my husband to take on more response. So this is dealing with the drawbacks. She's coming home exhausted from work. 
and then has to run the household. So I asked my husband to take on more responsibilities. I have the summers off, so she's a teacher. So how exhausting, you know, like is your day? I mean, you basically work from freaking what, 8.30 to three or something like that. And you have your summers off and you've got all these vacations throughout the year. Anyway, I have summers off, so I'll resume my dominant role while I'm on break. Right now, I'm just too tired. See, she's saying she doesn't want to lead. Flat out, she doesn't want to lead. It's too much work. I don't want to do it. It's too much work. Man, Kylie, it took a long time to establish boundaries. We should have sat down and written them out from the beginning. It was have, it would have saved, it was have saved a lot of, come on, Megan. It would have saved a lot of time, energy, and heartache. I'd recommend setting ground rules right away. Anyway, okay, so here's the tips. Don't rush it, talk it out, be patient, keep an open mind, consider each other's feelings, be mindful of your role, seek outside help. Megan's willing to help you out. Anyway, I think that's enough of that nonsense. Let's take some calls. Let's take some calls. Um, all right, let's grab the link to invite, copy to clipboard, and let's drop it in here. Ask a question. Okay, again, guys, if you're watching this somewhere else, head over to YouTube. I just dropped the StreamYard link there, and I should pin it up to the top so it doesn't go anywhere. Pin message to the top, boom. And while we're doing that, and you guys pile in, I gotta get my headphones, so I am going to, let's just drop this little sponsor reel for, let's pay some bills around here. This podcast episode is brought to you by Grondike Soap Company, Chad's Face Scrub, and the Unplugged Alpha Supplement Line. Guys, I use Tactical Soap and God of War Beard Oil every single day. Tactical Soap is a handmade product from the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not endocrine, lowering chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical hormones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Visit. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Let me get my headphones in. How about that? All right. The call-in line is open to everybody. Bring whatever question you want. I'm going to try this again, see if it works. This podcast episode is brought to you by Grondike Soap Company, Chad's Face Scrub, and the Unplugged Alpha Supplement Line. Guys, I use Tactical Soap and God of War Beard Oil every single day. Tactical Soap is a handmade product from the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not endocrine lowering chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical hormones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, my go-to face scrub to keep this manly face clean and clear is Chad's. Again, it's incredibly important to me to only use products with all natural ingredients without nasty chemicals that disrupt your testosterone levels or convert to estrogen in your body. And unlike watery scrubs that slip between your fingers, this thick face scrub with black lava sand gives you powerful results in one go. Visit GetChads.com and get 10% off when you use coupon code GETCHADS10. Brothers, if you're like me and take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha supplement line. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements in plastic containers, Mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from others. You want to make sure you absorb as much of the product as possible so you don't end up with expensive urine. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digested bioavailable capsule. Visit the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code ALPHA10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. You can find all the links I've just mentioned pinned below in the top comment of YouTube. Let's get on with the show. Well, that worked out pretty good. Nice and simple. All right, we got some callers here. You guys, if you have any questions, the StreamYard link is pinned to the top of the YouTube live show. Uh, I'm live every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're so inclined, these are always available on podcast form on all your favorite platforms, Spotify, iTunes, da, 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 da. you can go find them over there. Um, 
All right, let's see what we got in the questions here. And when you hop in, once you've clicked the link, make sure that you let me know in the private chat what it is you want to talk about. So uh, what do we got here? We got Nico who wants to know about hotties going for losers. All right. What's up, buddy? Hey, Rich, can you hear me? Yeah. So you want to know why attractive women go for nerds? Yeah. I So a lot of my girlfriends uh, in college are in relationships with in, in LTRs with these guys that either they don't work out, they don't necessarily have a job or they're not. I mean, they're not improving themselves. These are just, um, you know, frat guys or for lack of a better term, just not necessarily the most attractive people in the world. Um, but for some reason, you know, these girls who are very attractive and, and, and have a lot going for them, mm -hmm. for some reason, settle for these guys. And it just blows my fucking mind. Like, I don't understand why. All right. So, so let me ask you, why do you think that is? I think that it's easy to just settle with for someone. And, and, you know, if, if they're, if they don't want to play the, the, the cat and mouse game they just they just find a guy that will give them everything i don't know how how uh long have these uh couples been together that you're witnessing here over six months i mean these are you know long-term relationships well six years is a long-term relationship six months is a for, for college anyways you yeah. know well uh, is, is a long time in college yeah so that's the point that i was going to make i mean six months ain't that long right so yeah. if they're hanging out with these dorks for six months and they're not particularly attractive. Like I'm assuming, like when you say losers, not attractive, out of shape, yes. like uh, like neck beard sort of style. You yeah. know, Star Wars guys maybe follows like female led relationships on Twitter sort of thing, yes. stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, those won't last. Most of them, it's like little sands ticking down in the hourglass, and like the the end of that relationship comes up sooner or later. Those sorts of things don't last. They might be with them, you know, like now, like, you know, holding out to the public that they're a couple sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But chances are, you know, women like that, that go to Vegas, you know, with their girlfriends or go to New York, you know, for a weekend sort of thing, and they leave their boyfriends behind. That's when the fun happens for them, right? That's why whenever you've been to Las, like you ever been to Las Vegas? Yes. You know what happens in Vegas, right? Yeah, that's right. Vegas. Parties, girls weekends, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, a lot of these women have guys back home. That's why they're traveling together as women. Right. Mm -hmm. All these younglings. So, yeah, the, like women get into those relationships because, again, you know, it's not just men that are plugged into comforting lies. Women are, too. They're just like, oh, you know, you got to find a guy. And the, the other thing that you got to remember, too, is a lot of women go to go to college, university to get their MRS degree, you mm -hmm. know, their misses. Mm -hmm. So if they so if they come across a guy in college or university that looks like he might have a bright future, but he looks like a dork right now. Yeah. Then, you know, at least she's got him on the line. Right. And he's beta bucks for later on down the road. Mm -hmm. But she can always tick off that, you know, that itch, that uh, scratch, you know, with the alpha seed, you mm -hmm. know, with the other guys at the parties, the nightclubs, the weekends away with their girlfriends. So with a situation like that, do you recommend just, you know, waiting it out until she realizes you know, what, what she's doing or? Well, hang on um, a sec. Waiting out what? Like are you waiting out to find one of these girls? Like, like waiting for, for things to slowly dissolve or do you actively try to mate poach? I mean, well, well what, when you're talking about waiting it out, you're starting to sound like beta and waiting, right? So you, you definitely don't want to be the waiting it out guy. If you're a try see, the thing that guys seem to forget is that all women are dealing with a guy in their life. doesn't mm -hmm. matter who she is. Every woman you see at the grocery store, the gas station, the cafeteria, everywhere you go has a guy or guys in her life. Could be a guy that she's talking to, could be a husband, could be a boyfriend, could be uh, FWB. She could be a sugar baby. She could be any number of things, but she has at least one guy in her life, generally multiple, that she's dealing with. So yeah. when you, when you, bring a woman into your life, whether you're dating, friends with benefits, whatever, you're basically poaching that chick from some other guy. Somebody has to lose. So what's the question here? Like, you know, do I poach these girls from these nerds? Right. Dude, you're Nico. You're a good looking guy. What's the problem? You All don't right. need to ask for permission. Why don't you just go do it? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rich. I love your podcast. I'm, I'm reading your book. I'm also reading No More Mr. Nice Guy. I appreciate you.
Good, man. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a decent series of books to uh, get into for sure. Thanks. And Take care of yourself. Thank when you. When you're done with the book on Amazon, do me a solid. Leave me a review there. Just let people know that you got some value out of checking that out. All right, let's get into the next ones. Tips on a mentor. Sully. Sully, you still there? There you are. Tips on a mentor. Tips on a mentor. All right, what do you got for me, buddy? For tips Can you hear me on a mentor. Okay? Yep. Hey, how's it going, Rich? Uh, so yeah, I just I'm just looking for some guidance. So um, I come from a single mother household, so never really had a strong father figure. I really appreciate your content, man. How old are you? What do you rec? Uh, Twenty five. Do you still live at home? No, I live on my own. Okay, you live on your own. Okay, so what's the question here about mentorship? Yeah, yeah. So tips, kind of. You know, I'm just looking for guidance. I want someone to kind of help, you know, me navigate, you know, get better with finances, understand, uh, you know, kind of how to move forward in my career. I'm looking for something affordable though, because I don't make bank yet, you know? So, I mean, I'm talking like a little bit less than 40 K a year. It's, you know, and I want to become like, you Where know, you, you talk about in your book. Ohio. Oh, yeah, okay. Top Why 10% you know of hires is like, Why you know okay. I've just lived here my whole life. I haven't really, you know, ventured out. <laughs> okay. And what do you do for Probably should. Like, like what's your field? I, I work in healthcare. So I, I don't sell insurance. I work for a Christian healthcare sharing program. So right. similar, but yeah. And what do you do for uh, physical activity? You go to a gym, you got a dojo, like both, maybe? Yeah, I go to uh, Fitco in North Canton here. Um, but I'm actually a complete noob at jiu-jitsu. Just started getting into it. <laughs> okay, let's start, right? I mean, yeah. there's some good guys in those arenas. There's going to be you know, good instruction. And you want to spend time with those guys, right? You definitely want to do things not just, you know, at – at the location, at the event, you want to get together, you know, have a drink. You want to, you want to explore beyond that, right? What do you do for a living? You know, what do you do for fun? See if there's any opportunities to get involved in um, extracurriculars. Hey, let's go to the shooting range. I got some land. Da da da. ATV. Figure it out, right? I mean, you just get into it with these guys. As far as mentorship goes, like, what are you looking for specifically? You're looking for somebody to lead you how? Uh, well, I, kind of, I follow your your stuff, Rolo stuff, Fresh and Fit. There's a lot of good good information on there, but more for like the questions that I can't ask, like my, I don't have a dad. So like, I, there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I can't, you know, talk to him about. So I kind of, I'm looking for somebody to help with those kind of, I don't know, life questions, things that come up, relationships, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, you got me online, man. I'm $3,000 an hour, right? When I do private coaching. <laughs> so what's your question for me? Uh, gosh, man, I, honestly, just what do you, where do you think I should start to look to, to help better myself? I would I would figure out what it is that you want to be doing, you know, because when we're talking about purpose and putting a dent in the universe, the sooner that you can figure that out, the better at 25 is better than 45. Okay, yeah. so f figure out what it is that you want to do. You might have to go on a walkabout. You might have to try different industries. You might have to leave, God forbid, Ohio and try a different mm -hmm. part of the U.S. and, you know, um, plant some roots there sort of thing. But okay. the point being is that you're going to have to go on a bit of a walkabout. And at 25, you don't have much to offer, but your eagerness and your energy. Um, did you ever read the uh, four hour work week? No. Tim Ferriss? Mm -mm. Read it. Um, the reason why I'm telling you to read it is because one of the things that he talks about in there is basically how he figured out um, how to crack in a Silicon Valley with uh, angel investors and all that stuff. And as a young guy, he had nothing. He was living in his mom's van, right? He basically got this shitty mini minivan that he lived in. And he worked, I believe it's for a nonprofit or two. And he got exposed to some of the big names that exist today uh, by volunteering, right? Um, you're young, you don't have kids, you don't have any other obligations aside from your day-to-day -day job and sitting around, you know, watching YouTube whenever you're not doing something. Find somebody that uh, is is doing what you want to do and offer to volunteer and uh, contribute, right? Um, One last thing, Rich. donate your time. So mm -hmm. I guess a better question I could ask, you kind of sparked some thought there. Um, I'm in sales. Like that's kind of what I've done since I graduated. Yep. If I were to move and go somewhere, where would you recommend? Do you kind of have some tips for me? Well, I mean, my my preference would definitely not be fucking Ohio for sure. Um, <laughs> I'd want to live in a warmer climate. Um, so I would, so I'd pick a state in a warmer climate with a lower tax rate, um, and, um, reasonable cost of living and set up shop there. You'd also, you know, cause you're a young guy too. I mean, you also want to make sure you're going to be living in a city where there's women too, 
right? So you don't want to be living in the remote farmland because you're not going to have much dating opportunities, right? So you want to find more of a larger urban center, ideally a red state, so you're not dealing with the left-leaning cuckoos, you know, for Cocoa Puffs. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're, you know, living it up from there. But, I mean, again, you know, you can go a walkabout. You can kind of move around. You can explore, right? Right. Hey, Rich, thanks again, man. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, buddy. Check out the book if you have not boys. Thank you. Appreciate it. And again, you know, make sure you you guys leave those reviews. It just helps me out a ton. All right. Already done it, man. Have a good Thanks, one. Man. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Um, all right. We got, oh, we got Jenny here who wants to talk about paying 50, 50, everything with boyfriend. All right, Jenny, what do you got for me tonight? Hi. Can you hear me good? Yeah, you're good. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so a question. I've been with my boyfriend since 2006. Um, I'm 34, by the way, and he's 35. Um, I we pay fifty fifty on everything, um, household, uh, our utilities, rent, everything. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't really bother me until I started seeing your content, and I'm wondering, am I doing the wrong thing? Uh, well, I mean, you guys live together. Yes. And you, I mean, I'm guessing you make about the same income because you say fifty fifty here on the private message. So do you guys make about the same? Um. I, I think he makes a little bit more than me. Okay. And why does it start to bother you now? Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I just listening to to your, um, you know, your info and everything that the man's supposed to lead. He's supposed to pay for everything. And I felt that I was probably doing things wrong because I go 50, 50 on everything. Well, when I say that, I mean, I'm talking about like a conventional type of relationship where you're living together and, you ha and you're raising kids. Right. Because, yep. you know, typically in that sort of girl. environment, like, do you guys have kids? Yes. Uh, my son just turned seven a few days ago. Our son. Okay. So it's, uh, okay, so it's just the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's in school. You guys both go to work. So you're not a stay at home mom. There's no need for you to be a stay at home mom at this time. No, so, but I, I would love to, though. Uh, well, I mean, the kid's seven. Like, what are you going to do during the day while, while he's at school? Right. So, I, I mean, like when I'm making that point that, you know, men lead and they take care of things, it's generally speaking because she's at home making babies for him. She's making babies. She's making the house at home. She's making the meals. You know, she's a compliment to his life, that, like that sort of stuff. Um, when you get into the new age, you know, progressive sort of stuff where like you're working a job and he's working a job full time and you kind of come home and you take care of everything. 50 50 seems to be the norm right um that's just the way that people sort of set things up so what are you going to do now you know you're going to say hey you know hey bill i came across this bald guy with a beard on youtube and he said that you should be paying for everything so i'm just not going to pay for shit now no i don't i don't think so I just right so it's to, not going to work you know okay well I'll, I'll keep doing what i'm doing thank you yeah. so much it's nice meeting you yeah you're welcome see you jenny yeah so like Guys, like just to be clear, I mean, if you've got a woman that's a stay-at-home wife, a mom, she's you know she's making babies for you, that's the sort of environment <laughs> you know that you want to do that in. But it's, but it's always like, oh, you know, we'll take this information and we'll repackage it this way because uh, I don't want to be paying for shit anymore. <laughs> sometimes, man, sometimes we go like that. The cool thing about the stand-up desk is I got this uh, physio uh, conversation with a buddy of mine. He's, he's telling me to run this ball on the arch of my foot while I'm standing up at this desk. So I don't know. It's seems to be helping, you know, trying to, trying to delay the onset of age, man. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. I don't want to pay bills anymore. So you should check out this guy, Rich on YouTube. <laughs> uh, private chat. Okay. Uh, who do we got? We got a guy that says he's a entrepreneur. got a business question. All right. Let's talk business. Entrepreneur, man. Hey, I like the uh, standing desk, dude. I got one right here. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Love it. Um, so so my question, um, of course, I have like a, you know, the good old W-2 job, right? It pays pretty well. It's remote. Mm -hmm. um, gives me quite a bit of time to work on other things. I have, um, you know, the business set up and everything. It's completely something totally different than what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in finance right now, mm -hmm. and this side hustle is construction based right um so right now i'm doing it on the weekends obviously with i mean i know um 
you know, as far as like entrepreneurship and what you've recommended, you kind of want to separate yourself from time. Obviously, that's not the case with with this type of business model. Mm -hmm. Um, My question is, since I can only do it on the weekends, would it be? And like I said, my W-2 pays really well, right? Um, Would it be better for me to maybe like hire someone once, you know, work starts really picking up instead of me going full time, I could like hire someone and have them you know, work during the week while I'm still slaving away at the W-2. How old are you? Um, I'm, th- I'm 32. And there's no kids and there's no woman at home to take care of? Nah, man, nothing, Single nothing. Guy? Nope, okay. simple. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, what do you, what's the side gig again? Did you say it was construction? Yeah, it's construction base. Yeah, yeah, yep. Well, most guys that I know in the trades that have a, have a, a business, you know, where they're making like, close to a million bucks or just over a million bucks a year. I mean, if you set it up right, you know, it can be pretty sweet. Um, They generally book the jobs and then they hire people to fulfill them. Right. So, I mean, like you could take your evenings and weekends, set up the jobs. Right. And put your contractors in place to complete the job. The problem that you're going to have, though, is that while you're working your job, you know, your J-O-B during the week, you're going to have guys on site doing work for you, potentially making you money. But a lot of the complaints I hear from my friends in the trades are always the same. It's hard to get good guys or lazy. They do the bare minimum. They fuck it up. I have to go in and 100%. It. So, yep. I mean, ideally, you probably, if you're good at selling the gigs, is do that. But mm-hmm. make sure you have a guy that's got some skin in the game that you can call your right hand. Okay. You know, sort of thing. And then make sure that he takes care of the uh, crews on site. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was what I was thinking, too. If I was going to hire someone, you know, I'd pay him really well, right? Because I don't really need, at least as of now, I don't really need the money from that side gig, right? Okay. Um, so, you know, I could just focus on on just building building the business, put everything right back into it. So um, I think that's a pretty so, – so you recommend that I would just hire somebody? Yeah, or, well, you know the business, right? Like you know how to do what it is that you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can like sell it. I can estimate. It. Oh, yeah, okay. I can do all the estimations, everything. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, like you know how to price a job out. Now you, now you just have to have the right guys to fulfill the gig for you, right? Gotcha. So yep. it's like you know, it's like having them on your uh, contact list, and you know, you have good guys. You get rid of the shitty guys, obviously. And yeah, for when sure. You find a guy that you know can be your right hand. Then set him down and make sure he's got some skin in the game, pay him a little bit more, give him a cut of the job, whatever that needs to look like in your profession so that Mm -hmm. you can go do your W-2 thing and he's got his eyes on the prize while you're working. So you're basically making money while you're making money at work. Exactly, man. Good deal. All right. Good for you, buddy. Rich, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Love the hustle. Thank you. Yeah, man. That's it, guys. Love the hustle. And by the way, um, I've mentioned this before. I should drop it again. Uh, I am finishing up my uh, course on entrepreneurship. Where is the damn tab for the rest? There it is. So if you get on my email list, uh, you'll not only get the free chapter on the 20 red flags, which every guy should get. Again, the red flags are daddy issues, feminists, the unhappy, the unlucky, women that compete with you, women that keep men from her past around, women that are poor with money and have debt, Violent women, extreme jealousy, party girls, loads of tattoos and piercings, big notch counts, single moms, seeking validation online, sugar babies or prior sugar babies, pathological liars, they have baby rabies, they throw hissy fits, Uh, you're not in control of the birth, drama queens, and women that have addictive personalities. You'll get all the details on those red flags and why you must avoid them so you do not invite crazy into your life right there. Also, I only email that list very rarely whenever I have something going on. So what I will do is those of you that are on the email list will get early notification. The course is launched and you'll be able to opt in. Okay, that's probably going to be I'm going to aim for the end of March, maybe the first week of April, but get on the list. Um, It's going to be awesome. It's going to get your mindset around getting a business off the ground. Um, It's it's a lot easier and cheaper to learn from the mistakes of others. You'll save time and you'll save money. That's what that uh, course is gonna have. It's gonna get your mindset squared away on getting businesses off the ground. Love it. I mean, like the hustle has to be there, guys. You know, that's that's why we're here, you know, to do shit. Uh, let's see what we got. We got Adam here. 
Okay, Adam, Adam, where are you? A question on a plate that is wife stock. Ooh, ooh, a wife stock plate. What's up, brother? Hey, hey, hey. how's it going, Rich? Can you wait, wait, me? wait, wait. Let me guess. You're a lawyer. No. Oh. I can't tell you my real job. Okay, That's part well, of my game. So if the girl sees this, I don't tell them my job usually. Okay, well it's, some, well, it's something fancy because you got a nice backdrop there, right? Yeah, well, this is actually part of a, a podcast that I'm running here in Canada. So I wanted to. Cool. All right. So what's the question with the lead plate then? That's wife, wife, wife stock. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I put that in there to spice you up and, and okay. you know, get the topic going. All right. So give it to me. All right. So, Rich, um, long story short, you know, first of all, I want to thank you because I, I wouldn't have gone with this girl if it wasn't for the red pill. Right. It allowed me to better myself and, and to chase excellence. Um, and I did want to give you like basically this topic today is about letting women lead. I had this Disney-esque relationship just before I got introduced to the Red Pill, which was like basically she had a her one of her best friends was a movie producer and she took it to her to her uh, buddies. And they said, we can't produce this movie because these things don't happen in real life. It was our story, how it started. It was literally a Disney-esque story and it ended by me letting the girl lead in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So thank you, first of all, for letting me understand that, what happened. That's what I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what's so, the deal with this uh, plate that's wife stock right now? So I, I met this girl and basically that allowed me How to start betting women a little How bit better. You? What's that? How old are you? 27. And how old is she? 34. Dude. Yeah. Okay. I know. She's older. I know. That's why I wanted to bring it to you because I found that a lot of the girls my age are not interested in the same things, don't share the same values. And this is one of the first girls I've come across that actually wants to do the same things. Okay, well, you're calling her wife stock, so, so I'm assuming that you want to have children. Yeah, eventually. I mean, I slapped the better a little bit better for, for, for wife stock material, right? But it's, it's looking very, very good so far. Okay, well, I mean, you're starting off from a bad position. You know why? Why? Well, let's talk about the age difference. You know why the age difference yes. makes a big well, difference? Case, oh, I know. I know. I know. Well, well, tell me. Well, basically, she's going to have baby rabies. That's one of the things. Um, mm -hmm. She could also, um, I mean, obviously, in terms of leading, she might not listen. Well, but you're missing, is, well, you're yeah. missing the, the most important thing. She's, she's 34 and you're still vetting, so you're trying to figure it out. So let's say yeah. that it's going to take another year or two. Sure. Okay, so then she's 36. Yeah. How many kids do you want to have? Yeah, I see the math problem, Rich. Okay, so why, <laughs> why, why are we calling her wife stock? Well, look, I'm okay with having one or two kids. And, okay. and I know like, you know, it's, I know it's like in a bad position, but I mean, look, I could always just have her as my main girl and have girls with another girl. Like I'll be able to play that game. I don't okay, mind so, that. Okay, but she's seven years older than you though, right? So when no. she's 47, you're gonna be 40. Yeah. Okay, so what, so what makes her wife stock? Well, we, we wanna do exactly the same things together. And which, is, and like, which is basically what I want to do is, is, you know, how, you know, how what's going on in Canada right now. Yeah. So I wanted somebody to start building the foundation for, for a better society here, at least lead by example, by creating, uh, you know, uh, a model that other people can follow in terms of um, going back to living off the land, um, in terms of going back to having healthier relationships, right? She's, she's very much in touch with her feminine. And I can sense that she would be able to lead like a woman's circle. And I would love to be able to have like gatherings um, of men and women and talk about these things that we've lost in our society. We've lost what man manhood is. And that's why the work you do is so important. And the same thing for her, like she's very much in touch with her feminine side. Mm -hmm. um, I say she's wife dog because she was immediately, she was okay with the gender roles. When she came over, like she would, she would clean unprompted. Um, you know, she would follow my her? Where'd you What's meet her? That? How did I meet her? Yeah, where'd you meet her? Well, basically, I, I make music. So I met a lot of girls like this. I just go out, I make my music, and girls come to me. Like a DJ? Like you mix stuff? or No, no. Like I, I'll just go out, go for a walk, and I'll anywhere in the city or sometimes in the park, and I'll just have my instruments, and I'll just I'll just sing, and I'll drum, and I'll have, I have, a, like, I have a whole orchestra in, in my little box, right? Okay. And that's how I met the last one. And that's how I met this one. Um, it's worked for me very, very well. And it allows me to, to play the whole mystery thing of like, I'm not like the first one, I didn't even tell her my name or my age. 
uh-huh. uh, until like the second month, you know? Well, I mean, and, you look older than your age just because of the beard well, and the hair. And yeah, the and all that. yeah. And the way I am, it's like, I know most guys my age don't think like I do. They're still, they're still stuck somewhere. I've had enough life like experiences traveling and all this kind mm-hmm. of things that have allowed me to grow. And so that's why I connected with this woman. I'm like, women my age are not thinking like this. But at the same time, I want, I know I have blind spots and that's why I want to talk to you because you can see. Well, I mean, your biggest blind spot, I can tell you right now is that you idealize this, this, this woman in this relationship. No, I'll let her go if I have to. I don't care. Pardon pardon me? I'm, I'm fine with just letting her go. I mean, I know that, that she lives in a different province. And so even, even then it's like. Okay. So let's talk about the distance. So where do you live and where does she live? This is like a double freaking triple whammy. That's why I wanted to bring it to you. (laughs) You know? where, do you live and where does she live? <laughs> I live in Quebec and she's in uh, Nova Scotia. So it's like a 12, 15 hour drive. The drive. Okay. And how often do you see each other? Well, I, we, we basically got together and then like, I haven't seen her in like a, a week and I don't know, I'll probably see her in the beginning of the spring. Okay. So you, like you happened to go out to a park and you, and she saw you there playing your instruments and she fell well, for you. I can't say where I went because, because of what happened there, but you know what happened in Canada? That's where we met. Oh, at the trucker thing. Long story short. Okay. But, uh, but okay, so this the thing is the thing is, Rich. She ended up like we ended up. Um, I ended up having enough time with her to to see that there is potential, but at the same time, I yeah. know that the I know that you know the cards are stacked against me in a lot of ways, and so I'm fine letting her go because if I don't, how long if have I you known her? Cash, what's that? How long have you known her? Well, not too long. That's the thing. That's the thing, well, but I feel like I feel the whole like thing I thing in Ottawa people. stopped about what two, three weeks ago, well, two weeks ago. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, though. Rich, very new. I had enough experience to know that I don't want to say she's different because I know that that's like no. almost you can't do, do, do. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Yeah, don't even say those words. You don't know shit well, that's why. about her. That's why. You don't know anything that's why. about her. Okay, that's why. Rich. So, so you also called her a plate. So, how many other women are you dating right now? Well, I, I'm, I'm basically like, again, I could just go out and, and pick up other women. Like I have the girls I'm texting, um, mm-hmm. but it's okay, like, but I mean, like you said that she's a plate, but then you also yeah. said that you can go out and pick up other women. So yeah, so that's when you what, say that you have a plate, it means that you're dating m- multiple women simultaneously. So oh, how many other okay. women are you dating right now? Or is well, she the dating? One? No, I, I basically like, I just got through the, the last breakup and I just got through Okay, so so for clarity for guys watching, stop yes. calling one woman that you're dating a plate. She's not a plate. You okay. have one woman. When you okay. call somebody you're dating a plate, it's because you're spinning plates. So it okay. means you have multiple women in rotation. Right. Okay. Well, I, I look, I'm not worried because the bars are opening up today. So I'm just going to be back out. They are. That is yeah. correct. Yeah, no that problem. Correct. Like, I, I'm not worried about that, you know? Yeah. So... I mean, you've got a couple of problems here, right? I mean, yeah. have you read my book? Well, basically, I've listened to all all the episodes on your, uh, on yeah, your just, channel pretty just, much. Yeah, just, um, just grab the audio book and listen to it when you're driving oh, yeah. or something like that. Like, it's, okay. like, I've listened to my own book at least two or three times, right? Gotcha. Like, the material's that good. Okay, okay. I'm just being honest, right? Like, you're still yeah, plugged sure. in, right? So... Oh, well, maybe, yeah. I talked about the four quadrants, right? So, top... Unplugged yeah. alpha, bottom, plugged in alpha, top over here, unplugged beta, plugged in beta. Right. Okay. You're definitely not an unplugged alpha, right? I mean, the way that you're talking about her, the way that you idealize her, the selection process with her, um, you're still making some decisions that are based in a old world uh, yes. social order, right? Like, like the old contract, right? You can't, you can't make a 34 year old a mother of your children. I mean, you're just mm-hmm. not, it's just not going to work out. Like it, it right. like generally speaking, the best age gap between men and women, and they've done studies on this. The best age gap yeah. is somewhere between you are seven to 10 years, her senior. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, like we know that women have to do the uh, childbearing, despite what society tries to tell you today, like men can have periods too, or whatever that lyric is. But we know in reality that women do the childbearing and women are more fertile when they're younger. So, I mean, the first problem you have is why deal with a 34 year old when you should be dealing with somebody that's seven to 10 years younger than you. Right. The other thing too is how old you say you were again? 26, 27, 27. So the other question I would ask is why are you in such a rush? 
And while 27 may not seem like it's that young, yeah. I would recommend to guys to wait until like 30, 35 before they even start considering, you know, having kids with a woman. And by the time you get to that point, you're looking down at a woman that's seven to 10 years younger than you, maybe 15 right. years younger. Who cares? I mean, I know a 36 year old that just wiped up a 21 year old. A friend of mine's 40 and his girlfriend's like in her mid twenties and you know, they're, you know, they're having a, a kid, right? right. Um, you definitely want to date younger if you want to have children. And the other part of that too is, I mean, why would you want to limit yourself and get to that part of your life so quickly? Like what's the rush? Okay, good question. I would say, first of all, the way I see her is I, I don't mind not having children with her, but she has some skills, some knowledge of how I can basically build the foundations for a good life. And then I don't mind doing that with her, but because she also has a, a business that she runs that I can help her you know, bring to overdrive because she's not really good with tech, um, which I, I'll be glad to help her with. So like, I see ways for us to be able to work together and to create some kind of, you know, foundation for something. Got it. Because we both agreed on one thing. It's like having children now in this day and age is, is I don't, I don't know if it's the best idea, you know. And Dude, so, like, okay, so, so let's wrap up on this note. Yeah. I want you to read my book. Okay. okay. First of all, S second of all, I want you to slow, like, turn off the afterburners and slow this down a little bit. I mean, if you dig her vibe and you guys get along good and the smashing's fun, blah blah blah. Okay, you know, carry on. Got it. Yeah. But make sure that, that she isn't the only source of your attention right now. You've no. got to have other options right now, which means you're okay. going to have to spin plates. Because the only way that you're going to know the good ones from the bad ones is by contrast, right? Sure. If you go, like, you know, if you go to the grocery store and you need to get some produce and all you get is an orange because the only thing that's there is one orange you didn't have any option. You didn't have any right. choice to select, you know, it could be rotten. It could be uh, like green. It could be whatever. Right. It's sure. like, you know, the reason why they have a whole stack of produce there, you know, for to select uh, through is so you have those options and you've got to treat, you know, dating the same way. You just can't like, Oh, because she showed up at the same rally that I was at and she's pretty and she listened to my music and she liked me that we're, you know, we're going to talk about kids and a life and business and all like no, slow yeah. it down, dude. You've only known her for two, three weeks. Yeah. You know, sure. in my well, book, I talk about why you want to wait about 18 months or so before you yeah. make any decisions on a woman. And that's because yeah. usually guys date the representative. Right? Yeah. And then they rush into really? it and they say, I do. And then the representative fucks off and then they're left yeah. with the real thing. Yeah. And you don't know what the real thing is because you didn't spend, you know, couple of years dealing with her to see what she's all about. Yeah. And you can't do that on a distance, right? Like, no, no. I have videos on my channel about long-term relationships. You I know, watched you them look all. Them up. Yeah. 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 I was watching. So, the, funny yeah. Enough. Like they don't work. They, yeah. they, they yeah. generally you speak. Have to work work. Really short term. So if it doesn't work in the next few months, forget it. Can the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're I talking really to an older woman on a long-term basis that you barely even know, and you're already idealizing or calling her wife stock. Well, I think, I think you're right, Rich. I know you're right. No, you are right. I know I'm right too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, all right. Thank you, Rich. Um, good dose of reality. What's um, your um, What's your podcast, Adam? Since you're on here. So I was the one who hit you up, Rich. I was sending you the emails. Uh, basically, we have no Joe Rogan in Canada, and mm -hmm. what I would love to do is is to start having real discussions with real Canadian leaders. And you're one of our best leaders, Rich. That's why I wanted to come here and talk to you today, mm -hmm. because th I mean, I'm thinking, how many real Canadian leaders do we have? You're like one of the only ones. Well, I appreciate that. For real. Listen, Rich. I do I do collabs with people, you know, like on my content if they want to request me on. But I mean, you got to have an audience and, you know, we can carve out some time. Yeah. So if all those things are in okay. place, just shoot me an email with those details and let's chop it up. So can I say one last thing, Rich, yeah, on, yeah. That, mm -hmm. on that topic? So I am working with some high profile people that already have an audience. Um, and I do have like some people that like are, are pretty famous, but don't have an audience. So I was wondering, like, if I had a panel, let's say four or five really high profile people either have an audience or are big shots, but never really got into the whole digital scene. Mm -hmm. Would you want to be a part? Can I invite you at that point to say, would you like to be a part of that you know, round table? I, I take a look at all offers for collabs, for interviews. Definitely, definitely shoot me the email. Just say, hey, you know, I was that guy, Adam, that was dating the older lady that I wanted to wipe off. <laughs> oh, <okay. his> <laughs> I'll know exactly who you are when that email comes through. All right, my man. Thank you. All much. right, dude. I'll see you. <laughs> oh man.
She's wife stock. She's wife stock. All right, let's see what else we got here. James, uh, how do you pull together in life? I have wins, different avenues. I can't bring it all together. All right, James, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Rich? How are you? Good, man. Good. So, hey, I have a question about how you get everything together in life. So I had a long relationship for three years, broke up, got with a ton of women after that, very good sexual relationships, but struggled in school. Mm -hmm. Then I finally graduated school, got a good six-figure job, and the girls are just gone. So I don't know how to make it all come together in one go. How old are you? 27. Okay, you're a young guy. And what do you do for a living? Me the mechanical engineer. Okay, so you get paid decent? Yep. So, sorry, so after you got out of this relationship and got your life sorted, made more money, you know, matured a bit, I mean, you're obviously jacked. So you're having a harder time with women now? Yeah, so I'm not in school as much. Uh, I'm very busy now. I have like an hour-long commute to work, and then I work nine-hour days and an hour-long commute after work. Where do you meet women uh, right now? Uh, nowhere to be honest with you. Well, there's your problem, dude. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, okay. So the question is, how do I meet women? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. After right. school, how do you make that happen? Okay. Um, I've got a chapter in my book on online dating. Did you read it? I did. Yes. Okay. So what questions do you have about that? Um, people just aren't swiping right. It's just not happening. How's your photography? It's not good. I'm trying to figure that out right now, but so far it's, I haven't implemented that change yet. Okay. And how tall are you? I'm five nine. Okay. So I mean like you can you can round that up a little bit, but uh the optics of attraction always come from like like ninety, ninety five percent of the right swipes come based on the first photograph and it's gotta be good photography, right? And I yeah, I ex I express that clearly in the book is it's a game changer. Get a yeah. professional photo shoot, spend a couple hundred bucks, get somebody to shoot it for you. Get all the pictures that I mentioned in that chapter, you know, the awe picture, the group of friends picture, like all those pictures that I talk about. Make yeah. sure you get the bio sorted and things will improve for you. I mean, if you're working and you're busy and you got a long commute and all that sort of stuff, dude, like you could you could automate your dating life and be a cyber pimp just by following those instructions, right? It's like, it works. Like the reason why I put it in there, it works. And right off the bat, you're telling me that you're not even following the first tip, which is great photography. I got a friend who is a photographer, so I'm like, I'm addressing it. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. You will, you will find that that will change things dramatically for you. Okay. Yeah. All and right. Like, do you have game? I mean, it sounds like you were successful with women in person when you were in school and you had like the in real life interactions, right? So you've got game. I have it in person, but like the chat game is not there on text or over there's, like, the other stuff. Like there's no chat game. It's, it's like the whole point of the app is get a match get their number, yeah. get the date. Yeah. You don't want to do pen pal shit. You don't like, there's, there's a big misconception. There's a lot of nerds out there with YouTube channels that say, oh, you got to do this with a, a dating app and a chat game and this thing back and forth. And you got to banter and you got to do this. And I got it. And they put yeah. field reports up with fucking pages of this shit. Yeah. It's like, dude, the whole point of the dating app is match, get her phone number, set the date. Setting the date yep. is where the is where the magic starts to happen when you meet in person. You can't form a connection over witty banter and copy and paste these text lines, you know, to get her to want to, you know, go out with. It's just it's straightforward, dude. If she digs yeah. your vibe and there's genuine burning desire, like I talk about in chapter three of my book, then she will want to meet up with you. It's as simple as that. If she makes excuses, it's because she doesn't dig your vibe. Yeah. Uh, one more wrong. question. Uh, do you think like taking pictures without glasses is dishonest? Because to be completely honest with you, I look like way better without glasses than I do with them. But... What's, your, <laughs> what's your prescription on your glasses? Oh, it's not good. It's like 373 three, plus 3.75 plus 4.5. Okay. So like, that's similar to my, okay. So that's similar to my script, right? So yeah. You can take those off and you can wear sunglasses. You can play sports without them on. You can go to the gym without them on, but you need them to read. Like you need them to see the screen and, and like, you know, the words over here, right? Yeah. I get it. I've got the same script. So yeah, yeah you, you can have a picture in there of you, you know, all professional with the glasses dressed up ideally, maybe with a group of others at a boardroom table. Like that could be one picture so that she understands mm -hmm. that you've got eyewear so that you can read shit. Yeah. But from the other perspective, you can also have pictures not wearing them, right? Okay. Because, I mean, you don't wear them all the time, right? Uh, Not all the time. Like 80% of the time. Not, it's not 100%. But yeah. So, yeah. I so wear like them a, 
commonly. Yeah. So like a bit of advice, like I don't wear these glasses all the time and my script's stronger than yours. Yeah. Right. Like okay. I don't wear it when I'm um, outside, when I'm on a patio, when I'm driving the boat, like whatever. Right. It's, okay. it's, it's like, I need it to see fine details, wear it for that. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I also don't want, want my eyes to get totally used to them all the time too. Right. Yeah. I mean, like eventually I'll, I'll probably get the clear lens replacement surgery and just, just be done with it. But, um, that might not be for a couple of years, but yeah. So okay. yeah, to answer your question, yeah. Have a picture in there of you with the glasses on. You could probably get some better frames. Like one of the things that you can do because you've got a lot of exposed glass there. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the index that you got on those? Do you have the high index, uh, glass? Uh, is that, is that where you make it? thinner than it actually is that right. yeah I do have that yeah so i think the highest index is 1.78 make sure mm. you get the high index glass so that your glass is thinner and lighter the other thing too is you got a lot of frame there so when you have a prescription like that you definitely want to get glasses with a black frame and that have mm. some like boldness to them right yeah okay because there's a little bit of a style element that you got to get get right mm. when it comes to glasses and you got a lot of extra glass there that you don't need yeah. Which just magnifies your eyes. And then as the prescription gets worse, you start to look like bubbles from trailer park boys and it looks like shit. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. There's something there to consider with eyewear too, for guys that are farsighted. Okay. Uh, can I ask you one more question quickly? Yeah. Um, so not just girls, but also guys too. I'm having a hard time meeting like actual high value dudes. I met one guy in the gym and he's my personal trainer now. He's been helping me a lot. So like mm -hmm. my lifts have just maximized. But aside from that, I keep running into dudes that where do you live? Don't, don't match Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I don't have a lot of guys in my community at your age in Al Albuquerque. Otherwise, I'd say join. Uh, but we have meetups like we have a lot of meetups now. Um, okay. And like the travel distance isn't that far. Most of them are in the U.S. So, I mean, if you want to join my community, I mean, it's more than just in real life meetups and hooking up with, um, you know, dudes that have got their life sorted and, you know, are, are, are doing fun stuff with life. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's other opportunities to network. There's a lot of extra um, stuff that happens on our private forum. Let me just grab the link over here on the banner for the community. Um, okay. I'll just change the ticker. So if you go to entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash community, you can get in. If you have crypto, you can actually get a discount. Just shoot me an email. I'll get you set up. But for those guys that are like, yeah, I'm making good money. I'm sorted. I'm having a hard time connecting with like-minded men. That's mm -hmm. where you go. You know, it's as simple as that. Like, you, like if you're the smartest guy in the room, you got to move into another room. And sometimes you got to pay for entrance to that room. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it, Rich. It's just right, that after school, you know? <laughs> gotcha. Nice. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Um, Chance Preach with a $50. Great content. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, Moff, can you drop the link for your stereo show so I can get you a little uh, pump there? Um, I'm going to start to wind down. And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll do one more caller. I'll I'll do one more caller. So Moff, throw it up on the screen and I'll put it up there, but I'll do one more. So Hakeem, you got uh, a quick question for me? Yeah, I have, but uh, it's an extremely different case from yours. Like, uh, I'm in a different uh, side of the world. Like, I'm, Where do you I live? mean, I'm living in Algeria, which okay. is, uh, yeah, you know, Algeria. I know okay. where it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm in a society where it's like, it's extremely religious. Okay. And uh, I always say to Are my you friend, but, yeah, okay. and, like the society is Muslim, but uh, okay. So, yeah, I'm basically Muslim, and uh, like the the society there, uh, like is granting people the role of the alpha, like without without even them, like uh, like uh, they they don't need to 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 level up. In order I'm very to... familiar with Arab yeah. culture. So okay, so what's your question? Okay. So uh, what can I do? Like I'm, I'm here in a selection phase. Like I'm actually like in, uh, uh, we, we have to get engaged and then married very quickly. Like we don't have that dating thing. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you can date her, like uh, just to know her very well. And then uh, like you, you will go directly. Everything, the... everything that I talk about applies 
to you. It doesn't matter if you live as a Christian in North America, if you live as a Muslim in Africa, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Women are women. They're the same all the way around the world. They have the same basic hardwire, hardwiring. They've all evolved to be pretty much the same. They're all solipsistic. Yeah. They're all hypergamous. All the stuff that I talk about is consistent. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I find it. I find it very accurate. Like everything you say is. is so accurate. So why would you want to change any of the um, code that works? Right. I mean, if I say get to know her, then why mm -hmm. would you get married to her in three weeks? Right. I would still maintain. Exactly. You know, get to know her. I would exactly, still say, yeah. you know, consider options, right? Like date a bunch of women simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, exactly. like, how do you like, how do you know if she's a good chick if you don't get to know her? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, like, how do you know that much in order to like actually engage? That's that's my question. OK, so what are you talking uh, about engaging, like engaging in a conversation, being intimate no, with her? What? No, engaging, like literally engaging, because like we don't Oh, we getting don't engaged, have, like to get married yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything that I've talked about. Take your time, get to know her, spin some plates. Yeah, it, like right? you, you got to you got to know a lot of options in order to to actually stick on some options. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what guys, you know, seem to struggle with a lot of the times is like, dude, you want to make yourself your own mental point, point of origin. You want to have a good life. You want to have an easy, lucrative and fun life. You know, you want to get the yeah, most exactly. out of it. Why would you let, you know, somebody throw some chick you barely know into your arms and say, here, you two go and have a coffee and then you're going to be engaged next weekend. Yeah. How yeah, old are you, dude? I'm 22. Okay. Have you ever had a girlfriend before? Yeah, I had. Yeah. Okay. Are you a virgin? Uh, um virgin yeah okay. <laughs> yeah that's 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 kind of uh like our our social convention here is like uh, our social construction here is so strict like th there is no way out like you cannot are you gonna stay there are you gonna stay there i'm planning to go out but actually i appreciate i appreciate what's uh like the the, the role uh, like you're gonna meet with a virgin woman like you, you, there is no uh doubt on that like uh, you, uh, anything any woman like you're you're going to uh, to engage with her is, well let's is be honest i mean the chance i mean the chances of you finding a woman where you live that's a virgin is a lot higher but yeah. you're not guaranteed that she's a virgin exactly yeah that's that's true right that's true. so look you're you're a young guy that has cultural limitations on his dating life and you have expectations of you to do something right now that guys here I would recommend wait till they're 30 or 35, right? Yeah. So you want to go against all of that. Maybe, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? Maybe your cultural convictions work out. Maybe the fact that she's an absolute virgin works out. Maybe you guys live forever happily ever after. Maybe you bring on co-wives and you bring in three more wives and have, you know, 12 children. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But here's yeah. the thing though. I know women and they're all the same pretty much all the way around the world. There's, there's, there's cultural constrictions though, right? So again, like if where you live, you find that the vast majority of women are virgins, uh, you know, the men are able to lead the relationships and the women mm -hmm. follow, they enter conventionally feminine roles, men mm -hmm. have the masculine, like the standard sort of like Muslim, sort of like old school sort of way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe that'll work out for you. But I mean, like you're talking to a guy that lives in the West that went through the divorce grinder that talks to guys all day long every day of the week does like tons and tons of podcasts on this stuff from mm -hmm. guys that are like well i mean like you heard the guy earlier you know a couple of calls ago right the guy in quebec yeah. meets yeah. a girl that's like seven years older than him lives you know in the next province over a, a 13 hour car ride and he's talking about getting married to her after knowing her for a couple of weeks right like yeah, i still have to even... beat it out of guys but exactly, for you yeah. it might work but for you it might work where you're at right you know just exactly just based yeah. on your thing Thank you, right. uh, Rich. Like uh, your 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 content helped me enormously. Like uh, I would I would say uh, check out. Um, I think it's uh, Red Pill Arabic. Do you Red know who Pill. I'm talking about? I actually follow you and the Rolo. Like I read I read no, the no, Russian no, here, email. I'll, um, uh, sorry, it's Coach Kareem, and yeah, it's Red Pill Arabic. Right he's got a YouTube there. channel. Uh, I think he's, I want to say Jordan. I think he's in Jordan. Um, mm -hmm. His YouTube channel is Red Pill Arabic. It's mostly in Arabic. 
And he's definitely red pilled from from the perspective that I am, but he talks mm -hmm. to the Arabic world. So I would follow his advice based on your cultural values over exactly, what I'm telling yeah. you to do. I think that's yeah. probably a better source of information for you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Thank you, Rich. Okay, man. I, Take I care. All right, let's wrap up the show. Last super chat, but I know women. Ha ha ha. Amen, brother. Amen. Again, uh, Moff and Jaren are hopping over to Stereo. So go here. Um, the Stereo app you can put on your phone or you can, uh, I don't know, try on a desktop. I haven't used it forever, but just search for Moff and you'll get the live show. They do Q&A. It's kind of like a radio show. You don't have to show your face or anything. Um, it's just a bit of a companion or post show to this one. Uh, I'll be back next Monday again for another Unplugged Alpha. Uh, check out the pinned uh, links in the top comment after the show once I pop it in there for um, you know stuff like all the channel sponsors like I mentioned. Grab the book if you haven't read it. Definitely read it, guys. There's there's so much value in that. I mean, I was listening to like 30 minutes of it today when I was in the sauna, just sitting there chilling out. And I'm like, damn. Honestly, guys, lots of good information in there. Um, I'm doing a show on Playing to Win. I think I'm going to do it on Friday this week, if I'm not mistaken. This, this uh, Ukraine-Russian war that's going on right now, I'm not really sure what to make of it. I mean, I'm taking a look at it with a bit of a skeptical eye from different angles. And I'm gonna do a show on Friday. I've got a, a guest. I might bring in some extra guests as well um, on this one just to sort of chop it up. But I think it's an interesting, um, very interesting time. And, uh, you know, I, I've just seen government and the media and the mainstream and, and everything just lie about so many things over the years. It, it's it's just something that I'm just sifting through right now. So it should be an interesting uh, conversation. If there's anybody that you think, uh, you know, should uh, join the panel, shoot me an email um, or have them contact me. All right, let's wrap it up on that note. Thanks again. And hope you guys have an awesome night. Check out Moff on Stereo with Jaron. And we'll catch you guys later. Peace out.